Hey guys, uh, welcome to Kids Cast today. If you guys have not already liked the Kid Cast page, be sure to do so. Find them on Facebook, click like. And if you like this video today, be sure to share it with your social media um, followers and um, we'll be happy to do that. If you do not already follow our family, um, we are the Metzger Nation. We are on Facebook um, and you can find us by searching our name, which is in the title of the video, Metzger Nation on Facebook. And if you like our page, you can kind of see how we homeschool, how we um, learn, all of our family um, interactions and things like that. So we post a lot of fun stuff on there. Hey, how are you? Um, so today we're going to talk a little bit about um, first aid and teaching children first aid. Um, it's something that's so important. Now, let me remind you again that we are outside of Charlotte, North Carolina, and we are in the country. If our connection kind of cuts out or whatever, just kind of bear with us and it should come back in um, into focus. So hopefully we won't have any issues with that. So just kind of stick with us. Hey, Linda, how are you? Good morning, guys. Um, so yeah, we are a homeschool family. Um, Mark and I um, have 12 kids together. Three of those are adopted and the rest are biological and they range in age um, from, let's see, 24 down to five months, almost six months. So um, we're doing well this morning. I'm glad you're doing great. Um, it's good to see you. You're always on here, Gabrielle. Love seeing you. Um, so uh, yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about first aid today. So first aid can be kind of a complicated subject. A lot of parents don't know when to start teaching it because it seems like such a big subject or maybe such an adult subject where it's where, you know, if your child scrapes your knees, who do they go to? They go to mom, right? Um, yeah, we're doing well this morning. Hanging in there. Um, so uh, it's kind of a, it's, it's a broad subject and it's something that parents don't really know when to start teaching. So my theory is the sooner you can teach your kids about any subject, the better it is because number one, it's better that they learn the subject matter from you because you're their parent and you're the expert in their lives, right? And uh, number two, what if they need this information sooner than you have taught them? So it's something to, to get ahead of the game, to kind of jump on, to get them excited about it. Are they going to be able to do it to an adult um, standard? Probably not until they're, you know, maybe middle school they'd be able to do that. But you know what? Just the knowledge and just being comfortable with that knowledge would um, help them a lot. So um, let's talk a little bit about how to do that. First of all, um, did you guys know that accidents at home, 4,000 people die each year from an accident that happens in their house? and 2,700,000 are injured every year within their own house. Um, of those people, 140,000 people can die each year worldwide and first aid might have saved their lives. So first aid is something that's really important to know. And you know what, you hear stories, they're, they're few and far between, but you hear stories on the news of kids that have saved their parents' lives because of the knowledge that their parents had given them, say on seizures, on heart attacks, um, on strokes and things like that. Uh, so uh, it's it's really important. Um, did you know that just a blocked airway, just not being able to breathe, it can kill someone in three to four minutes. So just opening their airway by lifting their chin can save their lives. Can uh, you know what? Judah here, eight years old, he could open my airway by tilting my head back and just making sure that it maintains an openness. Um, you know, if I uh, if he couldn't do CPR, but hopefully he'd be able to attempt it at least. And you know, attempting it's better. Um, Better than nothing if there's no one else around. So 33% um, of fathers and 20% of mothers have been in a situation where they didn't even know how to help their own kids. So you know what? I'm talking about the kids knowing stuff today or not knowing stuff and the value of teaching it to them. But in all reality, all us adults need to have that information as well. Um, so if you don't feel confident in your first aid skills and your CPR skills, um, it's something that's really um, important to know and to brush up on if you don't feel confident in it. Say you got certified in CPR by the Red Cross years ago and you don't feel confident in it right now. You know what? Your child's life, a, a stranger's life could depend upon it. So it's important to brush up on it and there's many different ways to do that. Um, 900 people in the U.S. die from choking and 29,000 from heart attacks. Um, so a good way to prevent you know, die, death from heart attack is giving them aspirin right away, baby aspirin and um, if their heart stops to do CPR. So that's why these things are so important. Um, okay, so some, there's some different uh, ways that you can teach your kids about first aid. Um, one of my favorite go-tos is um, YouTube. 
YouTube has pretty much anything you can think of, right? On um, teaching, instructional videos, things like that. So it's good to kind of um, introduce your kids to maybe how to handle um, such things as hypothermia, which is, you know, if you get too cold, um, what steps should they take once they, um, if they find themselves in that situation or if they find a loved one in that situation, how can they help them? What about heat stroke? You know, summer's coming up. Um, that's going to be something that, that a lot of us are going to deal with in our communities, especially for those who are elderly and might not have air conditioning. Heat stroke is, is a real possibility. So if your neighbor needs help and, and they're showing signs of a heat stroke, your child should know the signs and be like, something's not right with Mrs. Smith. Or I'm not feeling too well right now. Maybe I need to go in and take a break. So knowing those signs, they can be learned on YouTube. So hypothermia, um, heat stroke. Um, also, basic wound cleaning. Do your children know how to clean a basic wound? You know, it, or do they come to you constantly and they're like, Mommy, fix it, and you fix it, and you're never explaining why you're fixing it. This is why we're doing this. This is why we're bandaging it up to keep the germs out, to keep you healthy. Um, this is why we're putting the antibiotic ointment on to keep um, an infection from beginning. You know, explain those things as you're doing them in real life, but also use YouTube maybe at, for a basic wound cleaning um, tutorial. Um, some other things that you can learn, um, you can learn the reasons why CPR would be needed, the situations that would lead up to that. You can show your kids videos on that. You can also do virtual field trips. They're a lot of fun. Um, you can actually Google, because there might be even more than just on YouTube, but virtual field trips to say an emergency room or a hospital um, or something like that um, so that you can get, you know, that bird's eye experience of um, the subject matter that you're teaching. Um, one of the most important things to do, I think, with kids is to familiarize them with um, the tools that are needed in first aid and just in medical care in general. It just It helps them become more comfortable with things. Um, as you can see right here, I'm going to turn this over to, to Julia and Ellie. They are my aspiring midwives. They really want to be nurse midwives, and they have all their gear on, as you can see. Um, <laughs> and they have their um, play tools right here. That they're familiarizing it, themselves with, some and I know that are that big. huh? Some of them are real, but broke. Some of them are real but broke. Yeah, they're broken. Yeah, this was a um, that's big manometer, which is a blood pressure cuff, and the little um, little dial broke off on here, so I let them play with that. But it's something that they can get hands-on experience with, and also um, now with, both of you took the CPR and first aid course online, right? You did? Did you? Okay. So both of them have taken a CPR and first aid course online, which really helped them to understand um, a little bit more about it. Um, they're going to need to brush on it, brush up on it through the years, but it was a good introductory. Um, so, for instance, they can take the baby doll that they have right there and practice infant CPR. Do you remember infant CPR at all? Or Jake, do you remember? Okay. Why don't you get over there, Jake? And you guys explain to me. Now, don't take this as true medical teaching because of their kids reiterating what they have learned on their age level. But, um, you know, of course, brush up on it through a professional resource, um, a certification course or such as that. But this is just a demonstration of how pretend play can help you help your child to master those skills. Okay, go ahead. Tell them. You want to tell who you are first? You talk really loud. I'm Julia, of course, I'm Esther, but, um, and I'm 11. <laughs> I'm Ellie, and I'm 9. And I'm Jake, and I'm 12. Okay, so tell us about infant CPR. Why would you need, why would you need to do CPR on an infant? You go. <laughs> if they're having trouble breathing, or if they're choking on food, and they can't swallow it correctly. You would use CPR on someone who, who is choking? What would you do on someone who's choking? What kind of maneuver? The Heimlich maneuver. The Heimlich maneuver. So that's a little bit different than CPR, right? CPR is to start the heart and to oxygenate, keep oxygen flowing through the body, right? Yes. Okay. So you do? You know the Heimlich maneuver for a baby? Okay. Go ahead. Speak really loud. Um, um, well, I don't exactly know if it's the same position for a, a, a baby or an adult. Okay. Does anyone know how to do it for the baby? What? You're going to turn the baby over on your arm. Okay, we can tell we need a little bit of brushing up on this. This here. <laughs> there. So you're supporting the head and the neck. And then you pat on the back. Push down. Pat firmly on the back like this. I can't do it from this angle. Like this. Forward. 
and that way maybe whatever's lost would come up. So what about infant CPR? Why would you need infant CPR? What, what is the purpose of CPR? It's to what? To, what are you doing to the, to the chest? Um, compressions, and compressions are what? Doing what for the heart? Opening up the airways. Well, opening up the airways, the first thing you do in CPR, tilting the head back. But what are you doing with the chest? When you're compressing the chest, you're getting oxygen flowing through what organ? What organ? The heart. The heart, yes. So you're making the heart pump blood. And you're continuing to, to do compression so that the heart continues to. So why would you need to keep the heart pumping? What would have happened to the baby to where the baby needs you to help its heart keep beating? The heart would have failed. The heart would have failed. Yeah, it, the heart would have stopped, yes. So basically the baby is dead if, you know, if it's to the point of needing CPR and you have to do it immediately. So you do chest compressions. Yes, Sally, go for it. You got it. Let Ellie do it. Chest compressions. And do you breathe into the mouth? Yes. Okay, show me how you breathe into the mouth. Uh huh. And show me how you open the airway. Tilt the, the baby's chin up. That's right. So, as you can see, pretend play is a really good way um, to get kids to solidify everything they've learned. Um, so, let's see. And you can actually act out an emergency, you know. Um, Make it as realistic as possible so that that child has to think through the steps necessary um, to get help for um, 